every programmer's life, there comes this moment where you have to learn about pointers in C. And it's an interesting moment because uh, pointers are just about the most useful feature of the C programming language. It is one of the most complicated features of this language as well. And it is one that uh, can get you into a lot of trouble if you don't know how to use it. And many people don't know how to use it properly. To be fair, it's not very easy to use pointers effectively. Uh, I mean, you can get confused in a number of places. Now, hopefully I will be able to demystify what pointers are, because actually, technically speaking, pointers are fairly simple things. But you can do a lot of very powerful things with them, and they can also get you into a lot of trouble if you're not careful. So, it's time. It's time, my friends. It is time. Let's get into pointers. So, as you can see, I've got a lot of uh, pointing up here, because it's a special slide, isn't it? A pointer in C is simply a type of variable which can contain a memory address. I'm going to say this again. A pointer in C, in C is simply a variable. It is a variable where we write memory addresses inside that variable, but it is a variable. And it's nothing else other than simply a variable. Now, pointers are really just variables, but this only tells us half the story about them. Because, yes, it is a, a pointer is a variable, and it simply contains the address or can contain the address of another variable. Uh, however, there are some special things we can do with them, and we will explore all the fun things you can do with pointers indeed. So, because of uh, being special uh, memory addresses, uh, spe excuse me, special variables, uh, there are some special operators which we can use with a pointer in order to do uh, things with them. And uh, there are some things we can do with pointers, and there are some things we cannot do with pointers. But basically, they're just variables, just uh, very special variables. These special operators that uh, we use when we use pointers use some special syntax and yield some type of special results. By now, you must have understood pointers are rather special, and the pointers and the op and the operators that we use for pointers are also rather special. Fundamentally, a pointer is simply a variable. All variables have a data type. Yeah, all variables have a type. We have so far seen integers. We have seen uh, characters. We have seen uh, d uh, we have seen floating point numbers and so on. So floats. Well, uh, it is possible to have actually a an integer pointer, which is what I have in this case, and this is how you write integer pointer in C, um, as opposed to simply integer, and you can have pointers of other data types as well. You can have float pointers and so on, but let's focus on integer pointers for now. So here I have a number of integers, an integer pointer, and then another integer at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, they also have a name. In here uh, we have uh, Okay, uh, we have uh, some names, and remember, since these are variables, they live in memory addresses, yeah? So, in this case, uh, integer var1 lives in this memory address, integer var2 lives in this memory address, and integer pointer var7 lives in this memory address. Now, they all live in memory addresses, yeah, because pointers, as I said, are normal variables. They have a data type, they have a name, they live in a memory address. And they also occupy some bits in memory, because all variables occupy bits in memory. Now, in this case, um, integer with name variable 1 lives in this memory address, and the bits in memory, we set them to be this uh, hexadecimal value, okay? So yeah, we just set the bits. Uh, we just set the bits in memory to be the hexadecimal value. 
and interestingly enough uh, the bits in this variable here are this bit pattern 6 0 f e f 4 now what makes this a pointer well fundamentally this is a pointer because of its data type we declared it to be a pointer therefore it is a pointer however within the pointer the data of the pointer can be a memory address it is possible for me to write this memory address uh, so 60FEF4 is actually a memory address and you can see it here 60FEF4 it is possible for me to write this uh, this number somewhere else as well but that by itself does not make any of the other variables a pointer a pointer is a pointer because it has been declared as a pointer and inside it we can write anything we want and if we write something that makes sense as a memory address then we can do fun things with it bear with me here so the special thing about pointers is that these bits in memory which the pointer occupies we decide to write a memory address in them in fact we could write other things in these bits in memory as well but it is a really good idea to write a memory address okay but it is simply a variable we could actually write whatever we want in there but we choose to put the uh, address of something so actually in this case uh, the address of var3 is being written inside the pointer called var7 that effectively makes it so that the pointer var7 points to this place in memory which is to this place in memory which contains this piece of data which happens to be an integer called var3 so basically using a pointer we can indirectly reference a place in memory which contains a variable which has some contents and you might say at this point why would we ever bother doing that now pointers as i said are extremely useful and we will explore many ways in which pointers can be useful but before we get into all of that stuff i would like to uh, bring up code blocks and write an extremely simple program so that we can have a look at things and then uh, take it from there i suppose let's go so i am going to try and keep this as simple as possible at this stage what we're going to do is we're going to create an integer and we're going to call it uh, a and I'm going to create an integer pointer and I'm going to call it my pointer so first of all let's try and print the memory address where a lives shall we so print printf and then i'm going to say okay variable variable a lives in a certain memory location so it's going to be percent %x because we want to print it in hexadecimal and let's put the 0x in front of it so it looks good and contains percent %x let's print whatever is inside that variable also in hexadecimal okay or actually let's print it in decimal for the sake of simplicity i'm going to set it as well a equals 10 so it looks nice yeah it looks nice and simple so here we want to have the address of a so the place in memory where a lives and that's going to be printed here and then we also want the contents of a so the thing that exists inside a uh, printed as a decimal and that's a fairly nice fairly simple statement and i'm just going to print this 
Let's give it a new line, make it look really nice. So, variable A lives in this place in memory, 60FEFC, and contains the number 10. All nice and well so far. Okay? Now, it is possible to print the number 10 as a hexadecimal as well. And I am going to do that here. So, let's print print 10 as a hexadecimal. It doesn't work very well because, yeah, 10 as a hexadecimal is A. Let's make that number 9. 9 as a hexadecimal is also 9. So, it could look really nice like this. Yeah. And we'll edit that. And then, what we want to do... Well, let's try and print our pointer. So, variable my PTR. And I'm going to print exactly the same thing for my PTR. So, I'm going to print the place in memory where my PTR lives. And I'm also going to print whatever happens to be inside it in hexadecimal. Now, in this case, this hexadecimal value is going to look a little bit uh, more complicated than simply 9. Okay? But bear with me. In this case, we're just treating it, we're treating the pointer simply as a variable. And the pointer is a variable, as I've said before. We're treating it as a variable. Yeah. So, I want to build and run. Okay, and in fact, you see that uh, that uh, variable my PTR lives in this memory location six zero F E F eight and contains eight in hexadecimal. Okay, that's cool. No problems with that. No surprises so far. Now, what is possible to do? It is possible for me to take my PTR, so my pointer effectively, remember a pointer is a variable, okay? And inside that variable, I want to write something. What do I want to write? Well, I suppose a fun thing to write would be the address of A, right? Yeah? So I'm going to write inside my PTR the address of A. So, if I was to read this again, it will contain the address of A after I execute this statement. So, instead of uh, the number 8 in hexadecimal, which is what was printed before, I should read the address of A actually when I read the pointer. And let's give it another new line somewhere here, so that we make that look good as well. Okay, and run it. See what happens. Alright, so you can see here, variable A lives in place called 60FEFC, and it contains 9 in hexadecimal. Variable my PTR lives in a place called F six zero F E F eight in hexadecimal and contains the number eight. And variable my PTR and after so what we're doing here is we're creating we are putting the address of A inside the pointer my PTR. Notice that I've just used the name of the pointer, no special symbols here or anything like this. I've just treated it as a variable, which it is a variable. And I have put inside it the memory address of 60FEFC, which happens to be the memory address of variable one, uh, variable A, excuse me. Okay, so the pointer is just a variable, it lives in a place, and this is where it lives, and it has some contents, it contains this. This happens to be the memory address of another variable. And this is all there is to it as a pointer. 
If you do understand this fundamental bit, then you've understood 50% of what pointers are. Most people don't get this bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you again, this time with a more complicated example. And then perhaps once more, just so that you can make sure that you've got it. So let's stick with two times initially, and then uh, we will have many, many different examples where we're declaring pointers and we're having fun with them in all sorts of different ways and explain them in all sorts of different ways. Looking forward to it, actually. Okay, so let me get my more complicated example up here. So with respect to bringing uh, this uh, more complicated example back up on my screen, which is uh, what you can see here, which is basically my slide. So what we've got here is uh, I have uh, a number of different variables that I want to create in computer memory. And it will take one or two moments to do, but please do bear with me as I'm going to recreate exactly this memory contents in the memory of my computer. And we will have a look at it together. So if I go back up here, uh, the first thing I need to do is create some integers. Yeah. Because, uh, well, that's what we're told to create here, some integers. So int var1 and then give it some content, int var2 and then give it some content. Okay, so I'm going to, going to do that. So int var1 and then I'm gonna, oh, well, let's, let's first of all leave it like this and it's gonna be a data type of integer. I'm just adding this comment here so that you guys can see exactly what this is. So it's an integer. And then I want to create a number of them. Okay, so var2 is an integer, 3 is an integer, 4 is an integer, 5 is an integer, 6 is an integer. Now according to my example here, 7 is a pointer. Okay, so I'm going to turn that into an integer pointer. Very simply, I'm just going to declare it as such. So it's going to be an integer pointer. And I'm going to give it a name var7. So this is not an integer, it's an integer pointer. Therefore, we have it here. The data type is an integer pointer. So that I, I'm very consistent with uh, my comments. Now, these are not the types of comments that you would find in normal, typical C programs. These are sort of more of educational type of comments, yeah? I wouldn't expect you when you're writing your normal production code to put comments explaining that an integer that has been defined as an integer is an integer and an integer pointer that has been defined as an integer pointer is a pointer. However, here, because uh, we are in educational purposes, I am demonstrating that as such. So uh, let's create another one, uh, call it 8, var 8, okay? And in fact, if I'm a really, if I'm a really, really <coughs> accurate person, the variables on my slide have got an underscore, so I'm just giving them an underscore everywhere as well. Okay, so now that I've got uh, my variables declared, let's give them some contents. Var1 is going to have the content of uh, this. And var2 is going to have the content of this. Now, don't want to bore you all to death, but uh, basically what I, what I am doing is I'm copying these values from somewhere else. And the reason why I'm copying the exact values is because I want what we will see in our code here to match precisely and exactly what you see on the slide. This is why I'm doing it. So let me really quickly put the other variables here. Now for seven, here we're going to do a special thing because remember, while everything else is a normal integer, this is actually, seven is actually an integer pointer. Now being an integer pointer, 
let's uh, give it something fun to have inside so it's going to have the address of var 3 so that it matches directly our slide and what we've got here is uh, just another another fun number okay now here what I'm actually doing is I'm assigning the address of something to the pointer okay and uh, since the pointer and I'm able to do this since the pointer is simply a variable so I've treated it like a variable I've used the equal sign to put something inside it and what I've put inside it is the address of variable 3 now the address of variable 3 according to our beautiful slide is this one here so variable 3 has this contents and lives in this place okay and basically in here I've put the address of variable 3 so inside variable 7 which is a pointer I've put the address of variable 3 which is this this thing that I've shown you here so let's go back to code blocks and that's basically what we have done now in order for this thing to have any any real value we really would hope to be able to print all of those so what I'm going to do here is create a printf statement and then say okay var underscore one contains zero uh, or should I say just percent x yeah it contains some number in this case what I'm expecting to see uh, is this and how I'm expecting to see that I'm gonna say just var one so that's going to print this which for var one is going to be just whatever is on that variable which is this thing here and say and leaves in location and then I'm going to print the memory location where var1 lives in oh got that completely wrong let me just cut it and paste it here and then say okay and leaves here so the address of var underscore one okay so that we know where in memory var1 lives effectively now give it a new line here just to make it look pretty and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this a number of times of course and it's gonna be two 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 three as you can see I'm not doing anything particularly fancy here uh, in fact I am treating the poor uh, I'm treating var7 which is actually an integer pointer precisely as I would treat an integer okay so the same way I'm treating the integers up here the same way I'm treating the pointer now in here I'm going to print whatever is saved inside the location memory that the pointer leaves which I am expecting to be var3 why I'm expecting this to be var3 because excuse me not var3 but the address of var3 why i'm expecting var7 to have the address of var3 inside it well because i have assigned var7 to have the address or the address of var3 inside it so that's why i'm expecting to see it okay now if i was to run this bit of code here you will see that var1 contains 5d a 96 D and lives in this location 60 FEFC um, let's go to the interesting stuff so var3 contains FA 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 as you can see here var3 contains FA 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 and actually let's bring this slide back up and let's bring the code down here yes that's sort of better here we go okay so var1 contains this which is this and lives in this location which is this 
And if we go and look at VAR3, it contains FA, FA, FA. Here is FA, FA, FA at VAR3. And you can see it here, it lives in this location, 60FEF4. And here again, I've got it 60FEF4. Okay, that's nice. And then we don't really care about all the other variables, but they are nice. Uh, but what we really care about is VAR7. Now VAR7 is an integer pointer and inside it what it leaves is the memory address of VAR3. Here is the what lives inside uh, what is inside VAR7 and here is the address of uh, VAR3 which is basically this association right here so uh, by us making this statement here we took the address of VAR3 and we put it inside var7 okay now effectively this has created an association or between the two and we say that the pointer var7 points to the integer var3 or to this memory location more specific and we haven't made any reference to the contents of that variable that the pointer is pointing to however we just uh, so far explored where the address of it is being actually copied within our system okay so yeah and uh, this is sort of how this works so when we did this step here var7 equals the address of 3 basically we took the address of 3 and we put it inside var7 now var7 is by itself a variable and it has a me an another memory location where it lives but this is completely irrelevant because uh, what we changed by this statement is not where the variable lives is whatever is written inside that variable which happens to be the address of another variable and therefore we can say that the pointer var7 is pointing to this memory address which happens to be a valid memory address of another variable which has some contents and we haven't really read the contents through the pointer yet i will show you how to do this later on however i'm just showing you the addresses here and how addresses work okay hopefully this has been uh, sort of enlightening uh,